Here in Matamoros, Mexico, the city has seen more than its share of trouble over the years. Of course, recently the rise of drug cartel violence in Mexico. Beyond that, decades and decades of abject poverty lost in the snapshot. An entire generation of children, many of whom have been abandoned to their own fate, living on their own in squalor and without hope. But there is hope, thanks to one man from Lansing and a group of his friends, former MSU football players, who are bringing a sense of change to this part of the country, and they're doing it one child at a time. I'm Dave Ackerley on the other side of the Rio Grande River, and I'll have that story coming up tonight at 6 and 11 on 6 News. WLNS 6 News, your news leader. Well, what makes a person who's devoted his professional life helping children in mm -hmm. his own community reach out, not just across state lines, but across a much bigger and broader? Really, it takes a certain something, maybe yeah. a calling, uh, maybe undying patience, maybe just a big heart. Recently, on assignment in Mexico, I found a local man and some of his friends who have all of the above. When John Shinsky was eight years old, his father died, and his mother, knowing that ends wouldn't meet, gave him up to the Catholic Orphanage in Cleveland, Ohio. And you've got a lot of mixed feelings when you're going into an orphanage and not knowing where you're going to live or where you're going to be or who's going to take care of you or what your future is going to be. Somehow, through football and luck, he ended up at Michigan State University recruited by the legendary Duffy Doherty. He got his degree, and what's more, he made a vow. And I said, at that time, I said, I'm going to build a home for kids someday. I don't know where, I don't know when, but I'm going to do it so that those kids can have an opportunity like I've had. He also got the chance to play on a team with guys who would be there for him and vice versa the rest of their lives. We are a family. Um, we came up together. We've supported each other. The late Brad Van Pelt, NFL Hall of Famer Joe DeLamalier, Lansing's Kelly Dean, and L.J. Bowron. Uh, my experience with my teammates is far beyond anything you could imagine. Fast forward nearly 40 years to a chance meeting Shinsky had on a flight down to Texas. When I sat next to a young man who was on spring break and I asked him what he was doing and he says, I'm going over to work at an orphanage at Matamoros. He said, it's awful. They have rats and it's very bad. John didn't let on that he was an orphan himself, but he did go over to see the folks who ran that old orphanage in Matamoros. I thought they were going to say food and clothing and they said, we need a new orphanage. And I knew right at that time uh, that my commitment 30 years ago had just been answered. You're a part of it, it's your place. You can go down there anytime you want. But it wouldn't be easy. Despite a gift of 17 acres of land, he needed nearly a million dollars to break ground and make it all happen. So he planned extensive fundraisers locally and he leaned on that special family of teammates. I could call any one of the players I, I played with right now anywhere and say, I'm coming over your house tomorrow to visit with you, and, and the door would be open. Only this time, John wasn't planning a social call. Just a little ride from Lansing to Mexico by bicycle. Once we walked out of Spartan Stadium like that, man, we're inspired for the entire trip. 2,000 miles to Matamoros. Okay, we've just arrived in the outskirts of Madisonville. Collecting pledges along the way, pledges totaling more than half a million dollars. The 18-day ride was a big success. After all, they survived it, raised awareness, raised a ton of money, and after years of planning, the building phase was finally happening, and not a moment too soon. All we've heard about recently from this part of Mexico has been violence with the drug cartels, and it's true, it has been bad. But the bigger problem for decades longer has been the abject poverty these people are living in. It's causing them to uproot by the thousands and go across the border into the U.S., many times leaving everything behind many times leaving behind their own children, the true tragic casualty of a bad situation. And if you just travel the streets of Matamoros, you will see kids in poverty, kids begging for food, kids uh, abandoned and just walking the streets. For Hall of Famer De Lamalure, the bike marathon was no picnic, but amazingly for someone whose NFL career got him enshrined in Canton. My wife said, on my tombstone, it's not gonna say he was in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. She said, people at that funeral are gonna say, he rode 2,000 miles when he was 58 years old with his two best friends. That's the best, and we did good. Tonight at 11, we'll take you inside this place of hope 
and love that thousands of people from mid-Michigan helped build with their donations. We'll also introduce you to the first group of residents at the City of Children, saved by one Spartan, his teammates, and an entire community. People who cared enough to make a difference in the banks of the Red Cedar across the Rio Grande. That's such a great story. You went there. You yeah. saw that orphanage firsthand. And everything around it. How many kids are there right now? There's David? almost 20 children right now. Yeah. And they literally, each week or two, are trying to add more. Eventually, yes. when they get it all built, they're going to have about 120 kids right at that and site. And probably easily able to do that, too, because yeah. the need is so great. Oh, so they could take in so many more. But, yeah. you know, you have to start small right. and build. And for those who'd yeah. like to help John with his orphanage in Mexico, it's easy to do. Just go to our website, WLNS.com. And right on our homepage, right in the middle, click the City of Children. Ciudad de los Niños icon, you'll get mm -hmm. more info and you can make a secure donation. Well, a local man, a former Spartan mm -hmm. football star and his old teammates, they've raised money for a new orphanage in Mexico. Their 2,000 mile bike ride last spring generated more than a half million dollars in donation. And so much of the project's seed money has been collected right here in mid-Michigan. The John Shinsky Orphanage is a reality and on Halloween weekend, I had the chance to go to poverty-stricken Matamoros in person to see the newly opened dream come true. Ciudad de los Niños, it means city of children, but you won't find this city on any map. In fact, without its founder, DeWitt's John Shinsky as our guide, we wouldn't have located it at all. Minutes away from downtown Matamoros, the newly opened orphanage seems like a place right out of old Mexico, both in its mission design and passers-by. But this is where old Mexico ends and new hope begins for these first residents, kids, most of whom have experienced nothing but deprivation their entire lives. Um, there's extreme poverty, um, there's extreme neglect, um, there's no direction regarding education. We were invited to the nearby home of Maria San Juana. She's 52, already a grandmother, 14 times over. Some of those children live with her here. Two rooms, no running water, no electricity. There is ventilation from the dozens of holes in her tin roof. And the kids' bedroom, just this old mattress. Most of Maria's animals aren't pets, they're food. And as for sanitation? So the bathroom is just it's kind of, it's, it's a, a lean-to, yes? Two of these kids may soon end up at the Shinsky Orphanage nearby. So I asked Maria how that made her feel. She says she doesn't want the family to be broken up, but she hopes for a better life for these kids and prays to God for it every day. And she still wanted us to take something for visiting, a gift, a fresh watermelon. <laughs> the realities of what brings children to this orphanage are never far from sight. Just travel the streets of Matamoros, you will see kids in poverty, kids begging for food, kids uh, abandoned and just walking the streets. That's what happened to Eduardo, 10 years old, going on 30, growing up alone on the streets, stealing to make ends meet, to him preferable to begging. I asked Eduardo about getting a second chance. Sí, siento como una familia. He says it's like a family here, and as with any family, some days are better than others. But all of it beats sitting around watching his dad throw his life and Eduardo's away on drugs. Now, Eduardo and the others have a safe place to call home where there's order, where there's guidance, three meals a day, and a school just down the road all made possible by people here in mid-Michigan who answered the call. The people in mid-Michigan have been phenomenal. I, I am just so deeply touched by their generosity. This bunk bed was donated by Michigan State Surplus, by Michigan State University Surplus. The mattresses were donated by uh, Robert Sala, a former football player, and the East Lansing Rotary. These blankets were handmade by uh, Kelly Dean's drivers in St. John's. Oh, and Dean, uh, also a former teammate of John's at MSU, threw in a few of these buses for good measure. <laughs> Still, despite how far they've come, there's plenty left to be done. Six buildings work. I mean, do you have to ride another 2,000 miles to get this thing done? What, what will t it take to get to that next level? Uh, What's your plan? Oh, I've got all kinds of projects I'm looking <laughs> so, at right now. But if I, I have to ride you, another, if I have to, if I have to walk 2,000 miles, I'll do it. 
It's whatever it takes, David, to make it happen. The controversial border issues between the U.S. and Mexico, they're not going away anytime soon. Neither are the drug cartels or the poverty. But surrounded by it all, an island alone, the city of children providing hope to those who had none. And for the trapped, a chance to escape. Even if getting out means to one day return, like John Shinsky, and help building on what this orphan from Lorain, Ohio, and his mid-Michigan friends have begun. People from the United States and Mexico have pulled together to put this facility together for these children by doing all kinds of acts of kindness and support. I honestly believe that these children are not only going to develop um, unbelievably, but they're also going to be able to contribute back. And I really believe that these children are going to change a generation here in Mexico. Teaching those kids the moves there, isn't he? He is. It is a second chance at life for them. It's it wonderful. really is. And he is a pretty amazing guy. He is a driven, yeah. focused he guy is. from MSU yeah. who has done an amazing job yes. with a lot of help as well. The world's going to see more on Super Sunday when CBS Sports does an extensive profile of this worthy project, all part of the Super Bowl game coverage. You'll see it right here live on TV6 as well. If you'd like to help them keep the city of children going, it's very easy to do. We have a special logo right on our website homepage, WLNS.com. Secure donations for those who want to help John and all of his friends help these kids living across the Rio Grande. It's worthwhile.